okay great yeah so um we'll proceed we <coughs> saw 1 john 2 16 and 17 where it talks about the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life um if you consider the garden of eden and the temptation of eve there is a parallel so what did uh, the serpent tell her the serpent told her if you, you do you see this fruit if you eat of this fruit then you, know, you will have you will become like god so what is the lust of the eyes lust of the eyes is to uh tempt people with what one sees and obviously the enemy will deceive us and tell us that we are going to get some satisfaction out of the seeing however that's not true you don't really receive anything productive through the lust of the eyes now lust of the flesh lust of the flesh means when one <clears throat> has a desire to experience something and again there's a deception there eat the fruit if you eat the fruit then something good is going to happen to you so lust of the flesh is to experience something and pride of life where satan tells uh, eve that you will be like god you will be so knowledgeable you will have all the wisdom you need so the pride of life so for 1 john 2 16 17 it endless for us you know the different kinds of deceptive suggestions that satan puts in our hearts in our lives now today we might <coughs> not be tempted with a fruit right lust of the eyes could do with the things that we view you know there's so much of uh, um uh, wrong imagery out there okay so <coughs> things that people view uh, and thankfully uh, meaning uh, all the technology that we have it's for good it's for, god has given us the technology for good things however people are using it you know for all the wrong things so people view all kinds of things on the phone you know there's pornography things that the enemy tells people that the lust of the eyes it will give you pleasure it will satisfy you however nothing is enough and it's a deception similarly lust of the flesh where people want to experience the wrong things so um uh, you know one goes out of their way to experience certain things pleasure uh, you could even take the example of gluttony one wants to eat and eat and consume this and consume that and yet you know, there's never a, an end to it it's a lust okay it's gone beyond the normal desire and now it's become a lust but the enemy gives us these suggestions no you experience it it's good for you spend money it's good for you experience lust of the flesh and pride of life where he lures us to a certain standard or a you know like you will be like this among the people you will have honor among the people money fame Okay. and these are the things that he is using against all people okay and particularly as believers we must be aware that this is what he is up to and so we must be careful of the suggestions that he brings to us now we will also understand now we know these three categories are where he tries to tempt us how does he really do this in our minds so second corinthians 10 verses 3 to 6 can somebody read this passage please 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 6 verses 3 <clears throat> for though we live in the world we do not wage war as the world does the weapon we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish the strongholds we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of god and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to christ and we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete amen thank you thank you sitkenu so in this passage do you notice 
the terms thoughts you know, imaginations arguments stronghold so basically there is another progression that we are talking about okay and that is the manner in which the process of temptation works now let me quickly show you for your better understanding ha huh. so if you can see this it will um stay in your minds so from this passage second corinthians 10 verses 3 to 6 we read about thoughts casting down every thought right that uh, goes against the knowledge of god imaginations reasoning arguments stronghold this is the progression in which temptation works now i'll explain it to us now a thought could be okay a thought could be that uh, mm, yeah uh okay i don't know which example to take uh because here at uh, apc we um have we we all have the same standard in the leadership so it's like no to alcohol we don't drink okay no alcohol at all so that's our standard so i I'll, i'll talk about alcohol um now let's say for somebody you know if there is a thought the enemy uh, maybe a, a young person who <clears throat> uh is just being exposed to all these things the enemy might put a suggestion in the mind of that young person and say hey it's okay what is wrong with drinking you know it's okay you can go you can drink as much as you want and all of that now it's just a thought and if you recall the progression temptation oppression you know and so on so it's just started as a thought but if the young person keeps yielding to it right uh sooner or later he will start imagining himself actually doing it maybe he's gone out a couple of times with some friends and even if his parents have been stopping him you know he convinces himself that hey my friends parents are not stopping him i think my parents are um old fashioned so it's okay their parents are not stopping so what's happening you know he uh has given into this habit he's going he's imagining himself going out with his friends often and he's also coming up with arguments now you know things like maybe my parents are old fashioned and uh, you know nothing wrong with uh, drinking i i read a research article about this and that so what's happening to a young person here you know he's slowly giving into the habit and becoming alcoholic okay now it could go to the extent of becoming a stronghold in that person's mind stronghold is when beyond the imaginations and arguments you know it's become very deep rooted in his mindset nothing wrong no i can do it no problem i can justify it okay so it's become a stronghold now <clears throat> and the progression which we saw you know the progression of moving from temptation to oppression possession empowerment the demon spirits <coughs> we will uh you know hopefully uh, i think it's not there in in this course but you can read the book the conquest of the mind okay again an apc publication it is available for you on our website over there there is a deeper and a better explanation of the battlefield of the mind and how a stronghold is formed and these strongholds are like a fortress for demons and demon spirits demon spirits can come and attach themselves to these strongholds and lead you know take the the uh, authority of the person take the will the ability of the person and then you know they can start becoming the stronger um, <clears throat> uh, they they can start playing a stronger role of influence in the person's life so at some point you know uh this individual that i just shared an example of he might have a stronghold and it's beyond his control to come out of the habit that he has developed over time so that's the manner in which this 
progression of temptation takes place. So what we are saying is, don't let anything become a stronghold. Okay, I just gave an example of alcohol, but you know, it could be lust. It could be some, you know, wrong uh, pictures or thoughts in our minds. And Satan says, no, nothing wrong. Nobody knows nothing wrong. But when the believer entertains these things, what happens? <laughs> the stages will definitely come. So from thoughts, it will move to imaginations. You might find that getting preoccupied with the wrong kind of thoughts and images in one's mind. Coming up with arguments. No, it's okay. Nothing wrong. Everyone does. It's all over the place. You know, I'm young. All kinds of arguments, right? The end, this is not from God. The enemy is putting it. And before you know it, one yields to it and they have a stronghold. It's difficult to come out. And it's also a good place for demons to come and attach to one's mind. Okay? So we must not let this progression happen. Now, can somebody read James 1 verses 13 through 16, please? James 1, 13 to 16. They tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire. He is dragged away and intensed. They after desire and, and has, then after desire has convinced it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Ma'am, you are on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Is it can you? So in this passage again, now that's also showing us a progression where Things may begin with a desire okay, or a lust uh, for whatever, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. And when desire is full grown, okay, so when the desire increases to an extent, it then moves into sin. right? So someone has conceived something in their mind for a long period of time and then finally, they want to do it. It goes from thought life to your regular action, right? Your behavior and your, um, uh, your, your, you know, what you're acting out. And you know, obviously, once it has gone to action, if one does not take hold of, uh, take charge of it at that point, then you know it moves into a stronghold and uh, it leads to destruction because what is the result of sin god has very clearly said the wages of sin is death and in this passage we saw that the what begins with desire the temptation it only ends up in destruction and that's what satan wants for us and that is why he uses the tactics of uh, all these methods particularly temptation on all human beings and especially the believers but when we understand this you know we have to work on overcoming temptation 1 corinthians 10 13 can someone read that please first corinthians 10 and verse 13 of uh, first corinthians 10 13 no temptation is overtaken you except such as in is common to men, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Thank you. Thank you, Zelitoli. So it shows us that, you know, God is somebody who uh, does not, you know, he will not let us be tempted beyond our overcoming capacity so the first thing for us to understand is we can overcome every temptation if i'm going through a certain temptation 
i can definitely overcome it okay and what we saw in 1 john 2 that it's not um you know it, this lust of the flesh lust of the eyes all these things are of the world they are not from god so who is the one who is tempting us it is satan and we also saw how it is not god who tempts us we could say that i am being tempted by god but god is not a tempter god never tempts anybody you know when uh, we are going through a very tough temptation one of the reasons could be and also scripture tells us the reason why temptation happens is because of our own desires so there might be some areas of weakness in our own flesh which the enemy recognizes and he is using that you know as um, uh, the the crack or the loophole through which he can enter and tempt us so god is not the tempter satan is the tempter and why is it that we go through certain challenges okay individually we we are the ones who know what temptations we go through there could be some things in our lives which we've not dealt with and we may have to deal with that in prayer we may have to deal with those things you know in uh, with the word of god so when we deal with those things we are shutting the door for the enemy and he no longer can uh, tempt us in those areas then the next thing that we must understand about temptation is we said that we can overcome right god will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear so obviously we are overcomers we also recognize that we have a sympathetic high priest okay who will sympathize with our weaknesses he recognizes us and he is always there to help us so you know that gives us a lot of confidence when we are going through temptation what does the enemy want instead he wants us to feel condemned he never wants us to go to god he'll say look at you you're so weak yeah uh, this is what you're going through these are the thoughts in your mind but immediately you know, we can take charge and say no you know my god is there and what did we read about jesus he overcame tempted in every way yet without sin and scripture also tells us that he is able to aid or help those who are going through temptation so we can go to jesus and we can ask him for help the other thing for us to know about temptation is that we can use the weapon of god's word to overcome temptation you know every time there was a suggestion external suggestion to jesus you know you can jump off uh, this place and angels will come and protect you what did jesus do he said no you no know, it is written you shall not tempt the lord your god then the <clears throat> satan told him i will give you the kingdoms of the world you fall down and worship me no it is written that you shall not worship right any other gods but uh, our god so jesus quoted the word of god so in the same way when we know god's word you know every time satan wants us to have uh, evil thoughts in our minds we can just say hey no but god's word says be holy as i am holy you know flee uh, youthful lusts uh it is the will of god for you know for for me to be sanctified you begin to quote all these scriptures so when we begin to speak god's word that is one way of overcoming the temptations what is another way of overcoming temptations prayer remember when the disciples of jesus in the garden of gethsemane he was in a very tough situation very soon he was going to go to the cross and he told his disciples you pray with me okay <laughs> pray with me um you know at least for an hour and they were dozing off but you know, he said watch and pray okay watch and pray so that you don't uh go into temptation so we can speak god's word when we are being tempted but we can also pray and we can receive god's strength you know during that period of temptation so these are all ways through which we can overcome temptation i'm going to pause for a bit to uh, just have some discussion and then we can go into the other workings or you know devices or schemes of the enemy 
So any any thoughts at this point? Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Nikki, go ahead. Yeah, Pastor, you made a very interesting point, which I just wanted to uh, ask you and clarify again. Is You said that um, Satan tempts you because you have those desires in your heart. So would I be right in assuming like when Satan tempted Jesus also, he was going to be the savior of the world. And even when he tried to tell him to jump off the temple top, it was more like saying, is God really going to protect you? So I just wanted to, like, is that actually how it works even for us? We might not even know it's in us, but Satan knows and he tempts us through those things. Yeah, good good observation, uh, Nikki. And I think so. You know, even the positive things in us, not just the loopholes, but even the positive things in us, he knows how to twist it uh, and uh, cause us to fall. So, yeah, I think that's right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. is, is, there, is there any, I mean, later also you could share it, if there's any verse or any... Mm. reference to back that if you could share it it would be great okay so mm. uh, uh what i would say is uh, we can look back at the garden of eden uh, nikki okay so when you uh see what the serpent did to eve you know, god told her that you must uh, not eat of this fruit okay N not eat of this tree now was it a wrong desire to like a fruit? No. Was it a wrong desire to eat a fruit? No. In fact, God was the one who put it in her heart. Okay. But Satan caused her to lust after knowledge, wisdom, become like God. So with that temptation, you know, he kind of just also added lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, now, liking a fruit, wanting to eat a fruit, it's not a sin, right? But for the sake of the wisdom, she went for the wrong fruit. That's the problem that happened here. So what I'm saying is, you know, there can be maybe within within us, uh, uh, wait, I, uh, on the basis of James, what we just read, I'll just tell you. Yeah, James 1, 13 through 16. You know, that clearly says, let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. One thing is clear. God is not testing us, you know, with a temptation. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. So, we can have some wrong desires within us like eve okay she what was the wrong desire knowledge becoming like god <clears throat> however satan did play on the so-called normal desires also which he had which is legitimate eating a fruit is legitimate so what i'm saying is satan is very deceptive and manipulative he can use our weaknesses but he also knows, he will try to pick on our strengths also. Okay, so that, does that uh, substantiate? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. Oh, okay, sure, sure. Yeah. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Okay, so I see um, Zeli Toli, she, uh, she has a comment here. How do we minister to someone who keeps falling into the same trap and is drawing far away from church fellowship? Okay, so uh, Zeli, as we, we've been saying, Satan mainly works in the area of our mind. So if someone is constantly falling into temptation, a good way to strengthen them is through the word of God. So maybe you can take time to visit this person often, you know, check with them. Hey, can we talk? You know, keep, maybe you can keep it casual. Can we just spend some time praying together? And through that journey also, you might find that this person is again falling into temptation. But don't worry about that. You keep telling them, 
you know if they are not born again then uh, tell them about jesus once they are born again you can you know keep telling them the holy spirit lives on the inside of you you are an overcomer uh, god is not the one who is tempting you you have the strength to overcome so what are you doing you're giving them the word giving them the word so all these things no within that person's mind the strongholds the arguments imagination what did we read we read that every thought take every thought captive okay so that person must develop the ability to take every thought captive from second corinthians 10 you know verses 3 to 6 so they will make that journey zeli and we have to journey with them that's the that's the best way okay i think hope... yeah that was helpful okay okay sure sure yeah yes yes uh, sitken ma'am as we are reading about temptation there is a question raising in my mind like as we see in the life of samson mm-hmm. he was full of temptation of the woman mm-hmm. but uh, in the judges 14 verses number 4 it is written yeah his parents did not knew that this was from the lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the philistine for at that time they were ruling over the israel so ma'am i was i wanted to know that this temptation this problem was from god in samson's life mm. this temptation has lord brought this temptation into the life of samson okay yeah so i uh, see uh, said can you whenever we interpret scripture right we should interpret it in the light of scripture we just saw that god doesn't tempt anybody okay so when you go and look back at the life of samson and his temptations obviously he was the one who was giving into it okay and we also know how that uh, that destroyed him however in scripture we also see that god is a god who turns the things that are meant for evil for our good you understood so god is able to make things work for his purpose so in this case samson falling into temptation that's another equation that's not what the scripture is talking about because god can't tempt samson but the opportunity for him to fight the enemies that yes you know god just use that opportunity for the victory of his people that's how you would interpret that does it help yes ma'am thank you okay great thank you thank you good um yeah good questions there uh, isaac uh, brother isaac has a question he says we established that the temptation of jesus was in the case of his mind not physical now what about the event with eve in eden did satan actually appear to her or was it tempted by her lust okay going by the scriptures uh, isaac the serpent came to her so <laughs> satan used the serpent okay to speak to her so that's what we would uh, take it as it was not in the area of her mind physically there was a serpent who spoke to her and that's how she was tempted is that okay isaac yes ma thank you yes thank you thank you isaac yes uh, lubega go ahead uh just uh, i was just to, i wanted to supplement something about the serpent uh, uh before the fall we see when they say that the the snake was more crafty than other creatures they are talking about it not in a negative way they are talking about it in a positive way because before the fall there was nothing wrong with the snake but uh satan needed a soul because it's only human beings who a human being when is a human meaning that he must plus a man man means the spirit and human is the, the, the dust in us that makes us a human being so satan needed a, a, a body to talk to if that's why he had to use a snake but when they are describing the snake in the first place before satan enters it enters it is just a characteristic that god gave it so it was a positive thing in the snake at that time so after satan using it uh to to deceive if this is where where the snake stays as is is being and uh, 
it was cast according to having allowed the snake to use it or what i mean having allowed the devil to use it like that and that but the, the snake at this at the start was a, a good thing whatever it was doing it was positive before the fall and another thing is uh, god gave human beings choice it was uh, I, I think we always have two choices, either a good one or a bad one. So whatever Eve did after that, it was her self deciding, not uh, any other thing. Thank you. That's what I had to think about it. I'm um, sorry if I was. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks, uh, Lubega. Good insights there. And uh, that's quite helpful. Thank you for sharing. So, yes, I think we've <clears throat> kind of uh, gone in depth. Uh, regarding temptation and we have an idea but i request you to read that book okay on the conquest of the mind um uh, which will will really show us how we must overcome you know any suggestions of the evil one and uh, be you know strong in the lord so temptation is one way in which satan uh, tries to attack us so the solution the way i told zeli the word of god so even us uh, as each one of us as believers, spend time in God's word, meditate on God's word. Let that become, you know, who you are. Let that be your your uh, self-talk. You know, we, we say, right, like self-talk is what others don't hear, what I tell myself. Yeah, you are strong, you are bold. But I might be telling myself, no, you are so weak, you can't make it. Nobody knows what I'm saying. But, you know, meditate on God's word to an extent where even our self-talk becomes the word of God, you know, where we are saying, yes, uh, um, that which is born of the spirit overcomes the world. Like it just becomes your uh, way of thinking, your way of living. Okay. And uh, that's the best way to deal with temptation and to equip others regarding temptation, the word of God again, right? Uh, help them to become strong in the word of God and they will be able to overcome temptation now the second tactic of the enemy is intimidation and as i already explained to us intimid intimidation uh and you know you could also say accusation is uh something that the enemy uses to weaken a believer and uh basically intimidation is trying to make something look so big and overwhelming when it is not so he will use intimidation to bring fear, uh, cause failure, give us a sense of, uh, you know, like smallness that we won't be able to do it because the enemy is so powerful and he's attacking and he has taken control of everything. But if we truly know God's word, then we know that, yeah, I can overcome. I am an overcomer in Jesus. Nothing that the enemy does is greater than God. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to believe in who I am in Christ Jesus and also use my weapons of warfare against him. Intimidation is to make us feel small and weak. Demons can cripple believers in their thoughts okay, with intimidation. So one of the ways in which he will intimidate is accuse. You know, he is called as what? The accuser of the brethren. And everything we know about us, in Christ Jesus, he'll speak opposite to that. No, you're not righteous. You can't enter God's presence. God doesn't accept your worship. You have accomplished nothing through your life. You know, so many things which are all opposite of what God is saying. And the more a believer gives into these thoughts, maybe the destiny of that believer is great. Okay, maybe God is calling that believer to do mighty things in the kingdom of God. But what is Satan doing in their mind? accusation no you can't do it you can't do it you're not good enough right so the believer has to overcome this sense of fear failure all of that and when the believer overcomes you know they can walk in the ways of god and see god's purposes fulfilled in their life so intimidation and he loves to do that you know sometimes it is said that uh, you can walk very strong with god but when you come into that phase of accusation and you don't know how to deal with uh, accusation from Satan in your mind, sometimes even strong people go into that self-doubt mode. Did God really call me? Can I do this? You know, will there be fruit in my ministry? Who's 
causing all these doubts satan you have to quickly go back to god's word and say no but god your word says you know you know the plans you have for me so just go back go back to the word again same way that you dealt with temptation deal with intimidation no fear of i have not received a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so i need to come against uh, all these things with the word of god that is intimidation intrusion what is intrusion intrusion is to trespass you know trespass uh, there is a boundary have you seen no trespassers allowed when you go to these uh, uh, sites where you know homes are constructed going to be constructed people have put proper boundaries there they have uh, maybe even uh, put fences uh, barbed wire fences or uh, you know brick walls and there is a note over there do not trespass trespassers will be punished or something like that trespass is crossing the boundary you're not supposed to legally you're not supposed to but who trespasses thieves trespass and what did jesus say i have come that you may have life and have it abundantly but the thief he comes to steal kill and destroy how does he enter jesus said that he is a good shepherd and he enters through uh, the front door but it is the thief who tries to enter through the back door because his work is not a good work okay he comes to steal kill and destroy so this is the work of satan he is constantly trying to trespass in the lives of believers now we as believers we say no because of the cross you know i have Uh, i have the blessings of god my my work is blessed my finances are blessed my health is blessed my family is blessed but what is satan trying to do he knows yeah you are blessed in every way i know that but i'll still try to come and you know create some trouble here some trouble there so the believer needs to be aware and then constantly guard not give any foothold to the devil so if the wall or the fence of a, a piece of land is broken or you know it's it's cracked that is an access to uh, to the thief he doesn't have to work very hard very easily he can come in and the same thing is applicable to believers yes we have all this in christ jesus but satan is a trespasser he'll try to look are there any cracks is there a sinful lifestyle of this person or you know something you know sometimes even through our confession we say uh, different things that uh, no i'll never make it i'll never be good enough whereas what is that you know we are agreeing with the lies of the devil with our confession but when we make a confession like that then what happens satan is very happy oh great you know they have confessed they have agreed with me so there is a crack now what can i do you know bring fear into the person bring uh, uh, all kinds of accusation into the person so any cracks like that he will try to enter so we must make sure that we do not give the enemy any foothold no sin uh, you know no uh, wrong confessions uh, instead of that we must resist the devil okay with the weapons of our warfare we will talk about all those weapons we have the blood of jesus we have the word of god uh, you know we we have the breastplate of righteousness we have the belt of truth we have the shoes of peace of the gospel so there are all these weapons which have been given to us we can use all this to say no trespassing we will not allow you i will not allow you to trespass you know or with regard to my life and the blessings that i have received from the cross so this is the manner in which we uh, you know go against the enemy okay so the thing is we already have the blessings that god has given but satan will try to stake claim and we should not let him instead we have to guard against it so any questions on intrusion thanks it can he shared the link here for the conquest of the mind yeah any questions on intrusion
so even uh, i think in one of our mentoring hours we were talking about uh, you know uh, generational um, you know things that are passed on generationally certain you know people called curses and things like that now that is also intrusion even when we become believers sometimes those doors can be open now are we born again do we have um you know uh, god's protection and healing and deliverance all of that yes we already have it but satan can still try to come in through <clears throat> some of those open doors because of you know the sins of the previous generation so he likes to trespass through any crack that he can find so as believers it's it's good to uh, you know not give the devil any stronghold like even if the holy spirit gives us a sense that yeah there could be something you know generationally you you just confess you you uh, break it you know uh, over your life nothing much by faith you just have to pray a prayer which says okay this dedication which my grandfather made or this thing that happened you know i i uh, i cancel that in the name of jesus from me going forward my generations are blessed and, and the blessing of the lord will be poured out on those generations so you know intrusion works in that way so satan tries to take advantage of any loophole in our lives okay so any any thoughts regarding that okay so yeah we can continue and we can uh, touch on the next uh, topic here which is opposition okay opposition is uh, when demons or satan they try to oppose the purposes of god so paul when uh, he writes to the thessalonians he says that you know i wanted to come i wanted to do this that but the enemy opposed me so satan tries to oppose us from doing what god wants us to do but we must again you know we are empowered by god we can overcome you know we have the weapons of our warfare which we can use against the enemy whatever opposition is rising against us you know we we can face it we can overcome it and uh, you know we can conquer it so there are oppositions that Uh, he could bring against us which we need to be aware of and uh, in instances like this use god's authority believers authority we will use our authority to rebuke the enemy and you know ask him to leave uh, in the name of jesus uh, just like you know what we discussed in matthew 16 verses 18 and 19 and also we would need the wisdom of god in the case of opposition because you know the enemy will try to oppose us in different ways now we also would need strategies from god to uh, maybe think ahead plan ahead and overcome the enemy there is a very beautiful um, section here in our notes pastor has shared a dream that he had uh, on uh, september 5th 2009 where you can read it yourself i'll just summarize it basically what he sees here is he sees uh, some small snakes um, and you know he's he begins to think oh these snakes are coming to attack me but then uh, they were very easy to handle so you know he dealt with them and then uh, as he goes forward he sees a venomous cobra okay uh, and he's thinking oh my goodness how am i going to escape this the small snakes i escaped what about this venomous cobra uh, and then he gets this thought take a pot and throw it on on the cobra so when he does that the cobra never expects pot uh, being thrown at it so it's just trying to deal with what has happened and in the meantime he escapes that spot and when he goes forward you know, he sees a huge snake which is uh, the kind that will um devour right it it will just eat up any creature 
so he's thinking how am i going to escape this now and uh, uh, he sees some chicken like live chicken around him um and uh, he takes those birds and he throws them to this snake and it begins to feed on the chicken instead of him so he wakes up in the morning and he thinks you know this is how god speaks right in the dreams it has to be interpreted uh, so then he prayed for interpretation and god gave him this interpretation that you know against the enemy for victory uh, and also pa- god uh, gave him this parallel passage from judges 20 where uh, you know there is a battle and in that battle god kind of gives a strategy okay to the to his people so basically god was telling him that you need strategy okay you need wisdom to fight against the enemy uh, and the attack from the enemy can be different each time and you can't respond in the same way but you need wisdom right you need wisdom from god and we know that the cross of the lord jesus is god's ultimate wisdom right triumphing over demonic powers and god is also able to give us that specific wisdom which we need in those moments or circumstances of opposition so we can pray we can get that revelation from god and deal with the enemy um uh, in the face of whatever it is that is being thrown at us so that is a little bit about opposition um and another thought about opposition that uh, is here in our notes is paul you know paul's thorn in the flesh in second corinthians 12 verses 6 through 9 we know that that thorn in the flesh is a demon spirit paul himself yeah, explains it in the passage so it's a demon spirit and why was the demon spirit trying to oppose paul because uh of the powerful ministry right paul had such a powerful ministry and great revelations and you know all these personal encounters with god um and this demon spirit was trying to oppose him but what did god tell him god told him look paul you are able to overcome okay my grace is sufficient for you and we also see the end of paul's life when he boldly says you know i fought a good fight i finished the race okay so he was able to do what god called him to do even when there was an opposition a demonic opposition um against his ministry so when there is opposition against us in some way for all of us it can be different okay the way satan is trying to oppose us individually it's different but know this that we can use the weapons of our warfare and we can face no matter what opposition it is okay so this is another way in which satan tries to uh, come against us through opposition so any anything regarding this that you may want to talk about okay all right so uh, what we'll do is we will wrap up for today and we will continue the remaining workings in the coming week you can think about it and uh, if you have questions please to uh, bring it up in the next class okay so let's pray right now and we can uh, close today's class i just want to request somebody to pray let's pray Father we want to thank you for this time you have given us thank you for helping us to understand uh, the different um, ways in which we can overcome the enemy and we thank you lord jesus for you are with us and thank you that you have given us authority and we pray oh god that we would be able to continue to walk victoriously with the authority that you have given us we pray for each one of us that we would be able to continue to learn more um regarding the authority and the power that you have given us and help us to use it for your glory oh god we praise you we, we thank you lord in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 thank you john thank you everyone have a blessed day and a great weekend and we'll meet again next week yeah thank you bye for now
थैंक यू मैम